Okay, welcome back. So this is part two of the three parts on the uh, Ensemble Logical Modeling Workshop Overview. So in the last section, we got to the point where we hit the first step in the process, which is identify those core business concepts, the person, place, thing, event, other concepts that the business works with. We did that through an interactive workshop, and then we ended up with distilling this down into a model. Let's go ahead and take a look at that on the board. Okay, so uh, we rearranged this just a little bit um, on the board, but these are the same concepts we had from the first lesson here. So we identified the core business concepts, and now what we're looking to do is to identify the unique, specific, natural business relationships between these concepts. And this is really, of course, our link design. And our purpose here is to just find out if you were, say, a fly on the wall and you saw this happen, what things naturally come together? What are naturally associated core business concepts? So if we take a look, we can see first of all, and as I mentioned earlier, the sale is an event, tends to drive relationships. So the sale has an event here and it says, for a sale to occur, what else happens? What comes together? What are the natural components that, that are part of this? And actually we can see that a sale actually brings together, well, everything here. It's the employee, the store, the customer, line item product, everything. Perhaps not the vendor. In other words, how this product is assigned to its vendor really doesn't have much of anything to do with the sale. So that's probably one piece that we can say, yeah, that, that doesn't really necessarily belong um, uh, as part of the sale relationship. It's its own relationship, products to, to vendor. Now let's get back to the, to the heart of it. A sale does have uh, an employee and a store and a customer and a bunch of products. And we will get into this into some of the later video sections, but for now, bear with me. What ends up happening is there's some kind of a header level relationship here that says, you know, a sale has at a minimum the construct. It happened in the store. There was a customer, that an employee helped them. This is kind of the header information that belongs together. And then I have a list of maybe 10, 20, 50, 100 different customer products that were purchased on the sale. And each one of those products uh, becomes a line item. And so this is the, the natural business relationships. So here we've identified three in this case, combinations. And now let's go back to the um, presentation and take a look. Okay, so we finished the first process and now we just got into the second part of the process. And here's where I want to really clarify an important thing. The first thing we do in this process is number one, identify naturally correlated core business concepts. Often they relate to events, but it's not always an event. It could be some kind of a configuration or assignment, but bear with it for now, events is good, right? Once we've done that, once we've identified the natural business relationship, we make an adjustment for sparsity and for redundancy. Sparsity meaning when there are records missing and redundancy meaning when things get repeated over and over and over again. So as you'll notice, what we did on the board, we ended up splitting out the relationship from a sale to its products away from the sale to its customer, store, and employee. And the reason we did that is that if we were to put them all into one relationship, we would end up with a lot of redundancy because for each one of those 50 or 100 products, we'd each time reiterate the fact that this sale happened in this store, same store for all these products, same vendor, same vendor for all the products, same customer, same for all the products. So we separated those relationships out to avoid that massive amount of redundancy that we would have had. So now if you think about it, cardinality or redundancy is not innately bad in a warehouse. As a matter of fact, we have quite a bit of redundancy, but here, because we're striving for the unique specific natural business relationship, it makes sense to look at that relationship and say, if I repeated those header level information components a hundred times, would that feel to you like it was a unique specific natural business relationship? Probably not. And that is exactly why we make that separation. And again, this is one of the core elements of ensemble and vault modeling. So, We'll cover more examples of this as we go into uh, the next sections.